So with it being just after 6.30 on Tuesday, May 12th, 2020, I will call this meeting of the Webster School Committee to order. And just as a friendly reminder, uh, because we are required to read something like this every meeting, on March 12th, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order modifying certain requirements of the open meeting law to enable body, public bodies to carry out the responsibilities while adhering to public health recommendations regarding social distancing. The executive order relieves public bodies from the requirement in the open meeting law that meetings be conducted in a public place that is open and physically accessible to the public provided that the public body makes provisions to ensure public access to the deliberations of the public body through adequate alternative means such as providing public access through telephone, internet, or satellite enabled audio or video conferencing, as well as it waives the requirement that a quorum of the body in the chair be present at the meeting location, which is why we are obviously now all meeting on Zoom. Um, just for everybody's information, this meeting is being recorded. And if all goes well, we do plan to uh, save the meeting on the school district website. We did post the link to the meeting on the district website. So if anyone from the community uh, wanted to join us, they could certainly do that as well. And I would just ask as a large group tonight, which is wonderful. And for those that may not be speaking for a while, if you could just mute, your, mute yourselves because sometimes the background noise does get a little loud. Um, just for the record, all five school committee members are with us this evening, as well as a significant portion of the district leadership team who will be introduced during the meeting. And most importantly, some very special guests are with us. With that being said, I welcome everybody. I hope everyone is surviving as best as everyone can in these uh, very sometimes difficult and challenging circumstances. First item on the agenda, I will entertain a motion to approve our April 14th, 2020 minutes. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Uh, Laurie, I just had one. I just noticed it right before the meeting. One possible correction on page two at the bottom, under public hearing, there's a sentence that says there were no public members that requested to join the meeting. There were actually one or two, I believe, public members on the meeting prior to the public hearing starting. So we may just want to change that sentence to say there were no questions asked by anyone from the public to join the meeting, because I do believe somebody was um, actually in it, one or two potential people were in attendance for the public hearing. All right, I'll make that change. Thank you. Any other changes to the minutes? Hearing none, Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Member Naparata? Yes. Member Siddiqui? Yeah. Member Blythe? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton. Yes. Next item on the agenda is the superintendent's report. Good evening, Dr. Gogan. Good evening, everyone. I miss being with you all, seeing you in person. Um, I have, as usual, a lengthy report. I will do my best to go through it and answer any questions that you may have. We've been busy, to say the least. Um, as you know, um, we're we're in a stay-at-home order until May 18th, and we're waiting to see what Governor Baker will say. And so that makes our planning kind of in limbo for lots of things. We are waiting anxiously to see where, where and what we can do next. Um, as you are also aware, Governor Baker just mandated that everyone wear masks indoors and out when they can't uh, socially distance. Um, and we've been following those guidelines. Um, as you know from our last meeting, the Department of Education came out and gave us uh, the next steps with remote learning. I'm completely pleased with what our teachers are doing. Uh, they have reviewed the prerequisite content standards and they're prioritizing these standards and figuring out what types of pre-recorded or live lessons they're going to teach. They're working in groups to do that. All of our families were given an opt-out form. Um, we want to make sure that families know that kids are online with uh, our teachers and um, we, do, we have very, very few parents who are opting out. 
Um, that form is online for anyone <coughs> watching um, and been sent out in a couple of my newsletters. Um, I'm pleased to say that um, Park Avenue Elementary School is aiming for two to three pre-recorded lessons, some morning meetings, um, and working their way into small groups. Uh, Webster Middle School is doing at least one pre-recorded lesson a week. Um, and these are on top of their already uh, daily enrichment activities. And at Bartlett High School, um, the teachers came up with a Google Meets live lesson pre-recorded um, plan, uh, different days and different schedules. The high school schedule is a little bit more complicated than other schedules. Um, and teachers are still posting, um, again, their assignments for other classes. Um, I would like to let you know that um, in an effort to help our teachers with keeping track of their own personal learning during this shift from being in school to remote learning, we have provided professional development templates to them so that they can uh, capture and, and get credit for time, uh, such as learning how to use Google Meets um, or exploring different online um, versions and how to reach their students. Those forms have been sent out to our teachers and to our paraprofessionals, and we will um, be able to give credit when credit is due for um, those kind of activities. I'd also like to let you know that last Wednesday, our paraprofessionals as a large group participated in a two hour PD workshop with attorney um, Paige Tobin. Tobin. Uh, the topics included special education laws, bullying and harassment, IEP process, 504s, 51A obligations, and other um, ways to respond to behaviors. I'm pleased to let you know that last week our uh, Park Avenue Elementary team and um, some of our IT staff spent three days um, giving out 309 Chromebooks to grades two, three, and four in a very safe um, safe manner, in a drive-through manner. Our IT staff organized and cleaned all of the equipment and um, all of the administrators had masks on and parents came through and picked up um, those Chromebooks so that our students could use them between now and the rest of the year. I'm also pleased to let you know that we've been tracking how many of our students do not have internet access. And we kind of take a dipstick on this every two or three weeks. Uh, so the last numbers that I have are pretty impressive. There's only five students at uh, Bartlett High School, uh, two students at the Webster Middle School, and an average of 10 students in grades two, three, and four right now at Park Avenue School. Um, that, that is just access. Um, and so for parents that don't have access, our counselors have been calling and trying to talk to parents and walk them through the steps of getting free spectrum. So we are doing a lot of outreach like that. Um, we have been um, working on plans this week. We actually, this is actually occurring this week where teachers are coming in on segregated times um, to go into their classrooms. Uh, and clean out their classrooms, get the resources that they may need to continue teaching throughout the rest of the year, and bag up students' belongings. Um, this is being done following all of the governor's guidelines, people are wearing masks, social distancing, and there's a very set number of people entering the building, and it's very, very structured. And I want to give Monique a shout out for making sure that this is very structured. People enter one door, exit another door, and our a shout out to our administrative team um, at each of the buildings and our custodians who are managing that. Um, you know, we 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 have gone to the length of even having uh, thermometers on in in the schools to make sure that people aren't entering if they're feeling sick. Um, Let's see. We have been working with the high school um, and uh, on how we're going to recognize our seniors, and we've come up with some um, plans. Again, all of our plans are contingent upon the governor's um, next statement on May 18th. But this is what is going on, and we'll give you a, we'll give you a, a heads up, and you'll be getting some invitations to some of these things soon. Um, we have a surprise for our seniors that are happening on, on May 14th, this Thursday. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about it because Logan's here. <laughs> um, 
Uh, we do have um, Carol Marchand, the rec department um, director who has offered to run a slideshow in town of our seniors on the marquee. And so we're working on that. We, we have some special banners that have been made and um, we have been working on uh, having super team. And so the super team will be meeting and this is the next thing that's coming up that you will be invited to. We're gonna have a virtual super team event and that's next uh, Thursday, May 21st at 6 p.m. Uh, the students and um, Mr. Thomas and Mrs. Honig were on a virtual call yesterday, I think it was, um, where we announced um, who were the winners. And so they're now working on their speeches and um, we're gonna do super team. Um, Mrs. Honig has been very generous and um, is going to be giving the kids uh, meals at bogeys and they're gonna come and pick up their meals prior to um, doing their speeches. So um, they're still gonna get a, um, some celebratory um, things out of that. Um, we are planning and hoping to do a um, senior grads on parade. Um, we know that the kids miss many of our traditional events and we're looking to do that in conjunction with a drive-through uh, barbecue on June Ruthanne, can you hear me? Distancing and made everyone safe. So those are some of the upcoming yeah. events that you're going to be getting really open. Dr. Gogan, she out? Hi. <laughs> you're only out for the last 10 minutes, so if you could just go back. Really? For the last 10 minutes, was I frozen? Because if I was frozen, I'm going to be really upset. You were just frozen. right after your grade parade, the grad parade. Right. From that okay. point. So yeah. the parade yeah. is scheduled for June 5th, and graduation is tentatively scheduled for July 18th outside on the Bartlett High School field. And I was just saying it really is contingent upon the governor's announcement. Um, but we're, 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 things are in motion. So I just wanted to kind of give you some of those dates to put in the back of your head. Um, Dr. Gogan, you um, didn't mention the scholarship sports award. Oh, yes, you're right. That's before the parade. Okay. Um, so we're going to combine um, the athletic scholarships and the um, scholarships that students get. And we're going to pre-record that and then push that out. And that date is um, the 28th. 28th. Thank you. So uh, is the date, that's when you're going to record it or that's when it's going to be quote unquote released? Both. We're going to re pre-record it in the morning and then we'll uh, post it and hopefully show it on local cable that evening. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I want to also let you know that course selection is also in process um, at Bartlett High School and for incoming Webster Middle School students going over to the high school. And we've been uh, doing um, summer school planning and for continued remote learning because we don't know what is actually going to happen. Um, so we ha he, these are some of our initial thoughts I will share with you. Nothing's solid but I, I will share with you. Uh, we're looking at our past program uh, with the elementary kids and doing and tying more project-based learning into that um, in a remote way. Uh, we're getting creative. A special education summer school will of course be happening. Uh, we have some ongoing meetings for Bartlett High School summer school and Webster Middle School summer school. And um, potentially um, we are thinking about having Title I and in a remote setting, maybe just once or twice a week. Um, our tentative dates are July 6th through August 6th, um, doing a Monday through Thursday for um, those schools that will meet for four days, um, doing a morning nine to 11. But again, that's all tentative. We're, we're gonna work on some information to families and look at our numbers of kids that require summer school. 
Am I going too fast? Okay. Uh, I do want to let you know that the CARES Act, um, we have a webinar this week. Uh, we will be applying for those funds. Um, and uh, we're looking forward to those additional funds. Our goal is to apply for them for FY21. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that right now. Um, in terms of personnel, I do want you to know that we are holding off hiring any new um, staff for the FY21 budget until it's firmed up, uh, except for these following positions. The grade four position, the 0.5 ELL position over at uh, Webster Middle School, um, and the Bartlett High School Quest teacher and foreign language teacher. Um, you know, we're waiting to see where FY21 falls. And um, under my personnel report, I have the pleasure tonight of recognizing two of our retirees from the Webster Middle School. I want to thank Barry Baggett and Ray Peon for joining us in a virtual capacity. We know it's not as good as being um, in person. We can't give you hugs. Um, but I want to speak a little bit about Barry first. Um, and then uh, offer it up anybody who wants to say anything. Um, Barry was hired in 1991. She graduated from UMass uh, Amherst, cum laude. She began her teaching career in 1978. And in 1982, she traveled to Beersheba, Israel to become the conductor of the Rubin Academy Music School. Um, Barry's taught band and chorus for 29 years at the junior high school and Bartlett High School. She's a trained as an instrumental teacher for flute and uh, piccolo, and she's been incredibly um, influential on hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of children in the Webster Public School. Uh, I, I don't know about any of you, but I've personally been in her class and have been in awe every single time I walk in her classroom. Her classroom management and command of teaching children music is just like I've never seen before. Barry, I just want to take the time to thank you for your dedicated years of service. And on behalf of the children and staff at Webster, we will miss you. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for the beautiful bouquet that came this morning. It's, it's lovely. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Mr. McCarra. I just want to say, Barry, uh, we've known each other for quite a while. Started be way before I was on the school committee when I was a, a parent. I was a very active parent, my wife and I, with the, particularly with the music program, and that's where we got to know each other. And we served on a few interview committees. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to say I really appreciate everything you've done for our district um, and for the kids in particular. Uh, and I wish you well in your retirement, you and your husband. Thank you so much. Okay. Congratulations. It must be a very odd way to retire. <laughs> it's, um, it's awful not having the closure and not being able to see the kids. Um, but nothing's normal about this right now, so. And I just wanted to share in addition to all the wonderful times of sitting in the gymatorium attending concerts, <laughs> some of my favorite evenings, honestly, have been taking the kids to Institute Park and watching <laughs> you and the orchestra and the, sitting there in the back trying to, where's Mrs. Baggett? Where's Mrs. Baggett? Oh, she just stood up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. To reiterate Mr. McCarry's points, you know, my kids loved you as a teacher. They learned not just about music, but they learned about having fun in a respectful way. So thank you for all your years of service. And I'm sorry, as Dr. Gogan said, that the last few days are, are this way, but we did want to ex extend our sincere appreciation for everything that you've given to our kids. Thank you. I appreciate that. And now I'd like to recognize Ray Peon who's also retiring at the end of the year. Ray was hired in 2001. He also graduated from UMass Amherst. I bet you guys didn't know that about each other. <laughs> Ray has been with um, us for 19 years and has served as a physical education and health teacher at both Bartlett High School and the Webster Middle School. Ray has participated in a variety of um, student athletic programs over the past 19 years. He's been the girls softball and basketball 
um, coach, the Bartlett High School football volunteer coach, and the Bartlett High School assistant baseball coach. Ray, I know that something tells me that we're going to still see you in some capacity. I just have that feeling about you. I wish you the very best in your retirement, and I want to thank you for being a positive role model for all of our students over the course of your years of service. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure serving the students and children of the town of Webster for all these years. It's That's the one thing, other than the people I've worked it with, that I'm gonna miss the most is working with the kids. But I'll be around. I'll be at a few games here and there. <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Thank you for, for everything. Thank you. And thank you again, thank you for that uh, lovely plant and flower. I got that this morning also. And it was nice. Just, just a little something. Definitely appreciate it. Well, Mr. Pia, let me just say again, on behalf of the committee, to reiterate, Dr. Goat, thank you for your years of service. And I think the best indication of the impact you've had with our kids here in Webster is a couple years ago, some of the folks may not know this, the senior class actually dedicated their yearbook to Mr. Peon. And obviously, that, in my, I would guess as a teacher, that's a pretty high award to get from the kids when they care so much about you and think so highly about you that they actually dedicate their yearbook. So again, thank you for all your years of service. And I'm sure there'll be a few football and basketball games that we might see us hanging around. And who knows, maybe we can get one of those high-end security jobs that Mr. Peranto has. <laughs> We're always looking. We're always looking. <laughs> Mr. Chairman? Mr. McCarra. No, I'll just say, hey, Ray, uh, congratulations. Even though I'm not a, a sports guy or was a, really a sports parent, every time I was around Bartlett for anything, there was Ray. Ray was always around. And uh, so it just shows his dedication to be around the kids. And, and so it's, it's no surprise that uh, he's recognized for everything that he does. And, and hey, Ray, you know that beard? It, it makes you look older than me, so uh, so keep it, you know. <laughs> Best of luck, Ray. And I know we'll see you. Thank you. Moving on, I have another very special person tonight to recognize, and that is Logan. Logan, uh, I want to thank you for your years of service as the school committee rep um, this year. And I want to talk a little bit about you. I'm going to embarrass you. Your dad's here. I think your aunt's here too. Um, I want to, you, your, your rap sheet's pretty impressive. So I'm going to read it. You um, have been the student council rep. You are the state MIAA student ambassador. You're a member of the Bartlett National Honor Society. You have a 3.7 GPA. You've been accepted and you're attending into the Western New England University. You've also been accepted into WNEAU computer engineering program. Your athletic history is beyond belief. For football, you won the Joseph McWinney Scholarship Athlete. You have been selected in the Shriners football all-star game. You're the Central Mass Football All-Star Team. You've been on that. You've been a Telegram and Gazette Super Team All-Star member, and you were an honorable mention last year. You've been the Bartlett High School Team Captain and quarterback for the past three years. That's just football. Now if we go to baseball. You've been lettered in varsity, uh, I'm sorry, basketball. Basketball for six years, grades seven through 12. You've been on the Southern Western County League as an all-star for four years. You were the MVP all-star your junior year. You were the Telegram and Gazette honorable mention your sophomore and junior years. You were the Telegram super team, men, super team senior year. You were selected to the Mass Coaches Association all-star team. Only five recipients in 
central mass get selected, 20 in the entire state for all divisions. You're a four-year captain and starter. Your overall record while participating was 99 to 16. When you were in fifth grade, Logan, you were named Knights of Columbus, national and international free throw champion. Logan, you sank an unheard of and perfect 25 for 25 free throws attempts at the College of Holy Cross to become that champion. Wow. <laughs> and you've been the team MVP sophomore, junior, and senior years. There's more. <laughs> Baseball. Three-year member and starting shortstop of the varsity baseball team. You were selected the Swickle All-Star junior year. You were elected the most valuable junior, most valuable player junior year. As if you are not busy enough with a 3.7 grade point average and playing all these sports, you do community service. Your dad and your family must be very proud because we're very proud of you. You have worked and played um, in the Webster Basketball League for the past nine years. You've coached for the past six years and you're refer refereed for the past three. You're a volunteer assistant for the WWBL Saturday Morning Basketball Clinic for the past six years. When do you rest, Rogan, Logan? When do you take time to rest? That's what I really want to know. Uh, it doesn't happen too often. <laughs> well, I, I know your dad is here and your aunt is here, and I want to um, congratulate you for being you know, a superstar of Bartlett High School and carrying on Bartlett High School pride. Um, and you, you've been outstanding. So I want to give you um, kudos when kudos, kudos is due. But I also want to give your dad an opportunity to talk to you, even though he's in the other room. Go ahead, Tony. Well, my wife is here also. She's hiding around the corner. She's going to peek in right now. So, Come on, Mom. Yes, Hi, Mel. <laughs> so, she was involved in this. Uh, obviously, we're very proud parents. Um, we know that, uh, you know, it's very hard to juggle uh, all the things that Logan does, and uh, he does it very well. Um, so we're looking for the uh, next chapter in his life, and, uh, you know, we're Unfortunately, we got to close the chapter here at Bartlett High School uh, soon, um, but we cannot be more proud of his success, not just athletically, but also academically. Congratulations, Logan. Thank you. Woo, Logan. Mr. Chair, may I say something? Absolutely. So Logan, um, I wanted to take the time to thank you for this past year and being part of the committee. Um, I have been fortunate enough to watch you grow up and watch you play all of the sports with all of your friends. Um, congratulations on all of your accomplishments, as well as the rest of the class. 2020 this year is definitely not what I expected. Um, I was looking forward to May um, with all of the things, but We'll just have to keep moving forward and keep track of each other and watching your basketball career, hopefully, right, this <laughs> this fall and winter. So congratulations, Logan. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So Logan, just again, um, I was very well aware of your accomplishments on the athletic fields and courts prior to you becoming our student rep. But I, one thing I must say, and, and most people probably knew this about you, but I didn't know you very well, is how incredibly impressed I've been with you are truly a very smart and mature young man. And your ability to interact with adults, especially prior to the meetings, that's actually one of my, when I first joined the committee, I was sitting where Mr. McCarris sits now. And I love that seat because I was sitting right next to the student rep. So before the meetings, I always got a chance to talk to all of the student reps. And the six years I've been on the committee, we've had some amazing student reps and you've been able to certainly maintained a very fine tradition. And Mr. McCarrick can actually attest to, he's been on it a little longer than I. One of our former student reps was just named 35th most influential person in the city of Boston out of 100. So, um, I was, I'm extremely thankful for the time that you put on in your busy schedule in representing your, your uh, classmates and the Bartlett community on the school committee. 
And I know for sure that you will be very, very successful, not only in college, but whatever you decide to do after that, and we wish you the best. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Erin. Yeah. If I can, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Hi, Logan. I just wanted to um, just say how very proud of you I am. Uh, you have been a true role model, um, not only on the court and on the field, but off of the court and off the field. Uh, whenever I see you play, you are just nothing but a true sport, sportsman. Um, you're fair. You're always rooting for your colleagues. You're always even encouraging other teams and, and just being a good sport. And that talks about how you are as a person. And, and you exemplify that when you're off the court, out in the school. I see you around the school or, or even in, on, in personal events. So I just wanted to thank you. And your family is so very proud of you. And uh, I can't wait to see um, what you become and where you go. I, I think it, it's all in your hands and you, you can do whatever you want. You, you have all the tools to do that. So congratulations. Thank you, and I just wanted to also give a shout out to um, Barry and Ray and just say thank you so much for, for everything that you've done for the school. What is it, a combined 48 years, I believe, uh, for the two of you. So um, there are a lot of things to celebrate tonight and you, you three are that uh, for Webster. So thank you so much. We, we are lucky in Webster. And Logan, we know we're gonna see you. I, I, I envision sitting next to you at the next Thanksgiving parade with um, the game with your grandparents. Um, so I know we're gonna see you too. Um, stay strong and thank you for all that you've done for us. And we are very proud of you. Thank you. Uh, I do wanna finish out my report um, tonight. Um, I do wanna let you know a little bit about community news. Um, May 1st was National School Lunch Hero Day. Uh, we had a, a small uh, and safe parade through our food distribution centers led by our um, police and fire and EMS. And probably I'd say 40 to 50 families joined the parade and we drove through and beeped our horns and thanked them. And um, it was very uh, a very exciting day for many of us. It was, we hadn't been out. Um, uh, the Department of Education has created a video that I shared with you, shared earlier with you before the meeting. I will send that out to you. Our staff are in that. We are eternally grateful for our cafeteria, cafeteria heroes and the work that they're doing. Um, they are continuing to serve fresh food, using local food, and they're going above and beyond um, to make sure that our kids are fed well and um, they're doing it with lots of pride. So I want to give another shout out to them. I also want to let you know that Jill St. Cyr, who was our angel at Christmas time, uh, is working with her It Starts at Home program, and she is uh, trying to raise funds for snacks and student supplies, and uh, she's working with us in the Thompson School District. Um, we haven't received anything yet from her, but she's trying to um, raise that, those funds. I also wanna let you know um, that just two days ago, I was notified that uh, Foundation Mafre um, is willing to donate uh, $10,000 to us to be used to help some of our most needy families with food, um, additional food, maybe in the way of a gift card. Um, uh, and I know, um, that there's a lot of paperwork to fill out with this uh, donation because they're an international co corporation and I'm in the middle of filling that out. But I would like to ask the school committee to make an exception tonight to accept this donation and then we will put it again on the agenda in June. Um, but I don't want anything to hold up having some funds coming into our most needy families. So um, I wanna thank Linda Johnson, uh, she, had, she and I have been working you know, back and forth on the phone to see what she could do. And we had heard um, of some families through our food line that were really struggling with getting some basic necessities like diapers and um, our, our ladies and Monique you know, helped um, many people. And I had suggested that that would be one area that they could help and they came back with, um, I said, how about $5,000? And they came back with, we're going to give you $10,000. So I'd, I'd like for the school committee to um, make a, an, an exception tonight, um, and then we'll put it on the agenda in June as well. Uh, I'm sorry, is that the end of your report? That is. Okay. Are there any questions or comments for Dr. Gilgan? 
Um, I have a question, just a, a quick one. Well, maybe two things. Yeah. Um, for Super Team, is that's going to be live? Like a Zoom call or? Zoom, like a Google okay. Meets or a Google Meets or Zoom. Okay, all right, perfect. And then for the sports awards and the scholarships, is that going to be recorded and then played and then on cable or, because a lot of people don't have cable just you know live stream and all that so i'm just wondering how to get that out to everybody yeah we're going to post it on our website and okay. um and we can post it on the cable channel for people who have it oh, uh, that's going to be pre-recorded um students are not coming into that um but there there will be you know they will be announced um and then at graduation all of the awards and plaques and and whatnot will be distributed to students at gra graduation okay all right, and just to end that, I just wanted to thank Mr. Thomas um, and everybody else that was involved in making all of the senior activities happen. I know it was a lot of work and all of the parents appreciate the tenacity and just moving forward with it. So thank you again. It means a lot. Any other questions or comments uh, for Dr. Gogan? If not, I will entertain a motion to accept the $10,000 donation from MAPRI and certainly once again, thank them for their incredible generosity in helping uh, the students of Webster. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Member Naparada? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes. Thank you very much, Dr. Gogan. You're welcome. Next item on the agenda is the business manager report. Good evening, Mrs. Perangeli. The first item on my agenda is the school building committee update. Um, not too much new there to report tonight. Um, I do have the feasibility study agreement further down. Um, on the agenda. I did send in the RFS um, the day after, I think it was our meeting. I'm not sure if we had them. our meeting was before or after the last school committee. I'm kind of losing track of days here. Um, but I did send that off to the MSBA for their approval. So as soon as uh, I get that back, then I can start the process of advertising and moving through. So I will keep you updated on that. Um, my second report is just other updates. Um, as Dr. Gogan said, uh, Chromebooks were distributed over at Park Ave. I wanted to give a big shout out to the admin team over there for really taking um, the brunt of that work and being the face out there, handing off all the Chromebooks to all the parents and hopefully getting to see some smiling faces and some students coming through, being able to see them um, gives everybody a little boost. So I wanna thank you for that. Um, the admin team over at Park Ave. I also want to give Mr. Zajac a shout out. He's been um, on a couple of occasions, have come in to uh, do some additional Chromebook distributions at the middle school um, for those families who couldn't make it or didn't think at first they'd need one because they had devices. But since then, things have changed. And we, we all know with the extension, multiple people using single devices has expanded. So people are looking for additional equipment. So Mr. Zajac has been flexible. Um, and has come in on a couple of occasions to distribute to families. So thank you, Michael, for doing that. Uh, that the other item on my agenda, if you would notice in your um, packets, there was a late addition uh, to your packet on the very bottom. Um, I spoke with the town moderator today, uh, Mr. Avlis. Uh, they are putting together just an advisory committee on behalf um, I'm the moderator, they are looking for a group to discuss the concerns of town meeting. As you know, lots of communities have postponed town meeting as we can't uh, safely meet in, an, in, a, in a quorum or in a public body that can suit and have the space to do it safely. So they are looking for alternate ways to hold public meetings. Um, and so he's, many towns and communities are putting advisory councils in place looking for feedback, looking for community support, and how to safely do that. Uh, Mr. Avlis, as you can see in his letter, um, is looking for representatives 
from each of the groups um, in town, town moderator, town administrator, the finance committee, he was looking for a recommendation. Um, there's also a health agent, chief of police, town clerk. He's looking for a school committee member or their designee. Uh, he's looking uh, to get the town IT um, fire chief, a representative of the board of selectmen, another representative of the board of health and potentially school IT. And Mr. Avalis was quick to recommend that I could serve two roles. Um, <laughs> let's use people's time wisely um, if we can do that so I would be willing to serve at the pleasure of the committee it's totally up to you feel free to jump in if you want to serve and participate in that in that um, advisory committee it certainly would not hurt my feelings um, <laughs> but if you would like I would be willing to do that on behalf of the committee so this is not required but certainly we wanted to discuss it with the entire committee and find out, uh, first of all, it's nice to see Mr. Perangeli that Mr. Avalis is still volunteering you for things to do beyond what your normal job description is. Mm -hmm. Some things don't change. Some things never change, that's right. But obviously, because of Mrs. Perangeli's position within the district, as well as also overseeing the IT department, at least from my perspective, it yeah. made the most sense for her to be our representative. So we wanted to share that with the committee tonight and make sure no one had an issue with that. Yeah. Feel free to jump in. Yeah, I don't, I Mr. think everybody's Chairman. muted right now. Mr. Chairman. Mr. McCarra. I'd be happy to make the motion to- We actually don't need a vote. Designate. <laughs> yes, uh, designate. Yeah. We don't need a vote because it's, I don't okay. I, I appreciate, I appreciate your support. Yeah. <laughs> and I assume that the other members don't have an issue with it. Nope. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Sounds Mom. good to me. <laughs> You're welcome. I will keep you updated. And that concludes my report, unless there's any questions. Any questions from Mrs. Perangeli? Hearing none. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda, unfortunately, probably for the last time with this fine young man, student update Logan Peranto. Good evening, Logan, once again. Good evening. Um, I just wanted to talk about how um, online classes have kind of changed, obviously, the uh, landscape of how schoolwork is going. Um, teachers are being very optimistic to all the kids and encouraging them to do all their work. And they're just being very strong influences on every child that's in Bartlett. Uh, what I've been trying to do on my my days, I just wanted to share that as well, is I just try to stay as active as possible. Um, either running, working out, right in the morning, just so I can wake myself up to make myself want to do some work. And then I just been, uh, besides all the work, it's just been kind of like an empty day. Not, not too much to do besides that. Um, just want to talk about how AP tests will be starting tomorrow. I'll be taking my first AP test tomorrow for AP literature. Um, the AP teachers have been giving uh, the students uh, much, much uh, needed uh, support with it, uh, giving practice tests and multiple other criteria to help. Um, Mrs. Gogan kind of touched on this, but I just want to talk about how students other than seniors have started filling out their schedules for the next coming year. And lastly, for my report, I would just like to thank the school committee uh, for, for the opportunity of being on the school committee board and it's just been a great experience. And that concludes your report. Yes. <laughs> thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments for Logan? Okay. It's been really nice getting to know you a little bit better over this year. Uh, and, you know, earlier everyone was sort of, you know, reminiscing on your many accomplishments, both academically and athletically. And just one observation for me from a distance has been that you just seem to be an all around good guy. Mm -hmm. 
So um, thank you for all that you've brought to the committee over the last year and for you know, the opportunity to get to know you better. I can't wait to see where life takes you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mrs. Siddiqui. And again, Logan, thank you for your time on the committee and uh, don't be a stranger and good luck with uh, college, hopefully in the fall. I'm not sure if your college has made a decision yet, but hopefully it'll happen. All right, thank you. Next item on the agenda under old business is the superintendent evaluation. Um, there are three primary legal responsibilities that all school committees have that are based on Massachusetts law. One is to establish policy for the district, which then the district leadership team enacts as part of their day-to-day -day operations. The second is to oversee and, and ultimately approve the budget. And the third primary legal responsibility for any school committee is the hiring and oversight of the superintendent. In my opinion, I believe this is the most important role that the committee has both as individual members as well as an entire committee. And so uh, it's that time of year again where we as a committee evaluate Dr. Gogan's performance. Um, unfortunately, the reality is because anytime that we are together as a quorum, it has to be held in open session. Dr. Gogan and any all superintendents have the pleasure of having their performance evaluation annually done in public. Uh, at the last meeting, Dr. Gogan presented her findings uh, based on the work that she and she would probably admit her team uh, did throughout the, this past year. And then each member took that information as well as the experience we have all had with working with Dr. Gogan over the last year and completed uh, the state evaluation report for superintendents. My plan this evening, unless the members object, is to go through the highlights of Dr. Gogan's evaluation um, and then certainly open it up for any comments that any of the members uh, may want to make. So for those that might be watching that are not familiar with the superintendent evaluation, it's broken up into a couple different steps. And as Mr. McCarroll likes to say every year, they're really easy to follow and it's a lot of fun going through of them for those of us that are not in education. But the first step is we're asked to uh, assess the goals that were set by Dr. Gogan and the school committee at the beginning of the year. The next step is we're asked to assess her based on four standards that I will go through in a moment. We are then asked to provide an overall performance ranking, and then how to then rate the impact on student learning that that ranking has based on uh, the information that we are provided by DESE. We do, we are provided a very detailed rubric that we are using uh, to, to complete this evaluation. One thing I just wanted to comment on is sometimes the terms in these evaluations, I don't really like the terms that they use. The term proficient, if you just heard what that means, would indicate kind of average, that somebody is doing a proficient job, that they're okay. But the actual definition that Desi gives for the term proficient is proficient practice is understood to be fully satisfactory. This is the rigorous expected level of performance. And there's more information in the rubric. So the proficient level is a very, very high standard to meet. The other definition I wanted to give was the word exemplary. The definition that we are given in order to assess Dr. Gogan, if we do happen to think that any of the standards or the indicators that are within the standards fall under the category of exemplary, is exemplary is a rating of exemplary, in, I'm sorry, a rating of exemplary indicates that practice significantly exceeds proficient and could serve as a model of practice regionally or statewide. Summarizing, if somebody is deemed to be exemplary in a certain standard or indicator, as the definition indicates, that person, from our opinion, is the model of what a superintendent should be doing in regards to that particular um, standard or indicator. So each individual member completed their own evaluation. 
And then what we normally do is combine all five evaluations into a summary document, which is what I will review quickly this evening. Under the goals that, again, were agreed upon at the beginning of the school year by Dr. Gogan and approved by the school committee, the first category under professional practice goals, two of the members felt that she met the goals and three of the members felt that Dr. Gogan exceeded the goals. Under the student's learning goals, three of the members felt that she met the goals and two of the members felt that she exceeded. And I guess I probably should have started by the categories under this are did not meet some progress, significant progress met and exceeded. So met and exceeded are on the high end of what we are uh, allowed to select. Under district improvement goals, Two of the members felt that Dr. Gogan met those goals and three of the members felt that she exceeded those goals. Then again, there are four standards and under each standard there are anywhere I think between four to six indicators. I'm not going to go through every single one of the indicators, but I certainly do want to review what the overall ranking was for each standard. Under standard one instructional leadership, two of the members felt that Dr. Gogan was proficient and three of the members felt that she was exemplary. Under standard two, management and operations, two of the members felt that she was proficient and three of the members felt that she was exemplary. Under standard three, family and community engagement, all five members felt that she was exemplary for that particular standard. And under standard four, professional culture, Two of the members felt she was proficient and three of the members uh, ranked her as exemplary. Utilizing all that information at the end, you're actually asked to come up with an overall ranking for the superintendent for this past school year. And so the rate overall sum summative performance, one member felt that Dr. Gogan was proficient and four members uh, ranked her as exemplary. And the final step is we are asked to determine, rate the impact on student learning. The categories there are low, moderate, and high. One member felt that the impact was moderate and four members felt that the impact was high. Throughout the entire evaluation, the members are allowed and sometimes required, depending on what they use as a, um, as a ranking to provide comments. I'm not going to read all of the comments. Again, this is a, a public document um, once it's approved potentially. Um, but what I did want to do at this time, instead of reading all the comments, was certainly open it up to the members of the committee to share any thoughts or comments that they might have regarding Dr. Gogan's evaluation. Mr. Chair? Mrs. Blythe. Um, Dr. Gogan, it is continuously a pleasure to work with you. Um, I'd love to see how the district is evolving and moving forward. You know, examples of this are, are clear in, you know, the improved MCAS scores, uh, which we haven't seen in a while. So, so that was, that was great. Um, your continued community partnerships, there are so many partnerships. <laughs> you can't even really list them all. I can't remember them all. Um, you know, the continuous way that you engage parents and bring them into our schools with, you know, the, the Portuguese newsletter, the Spanish newsletter, it's, it's really important um, to break down those gaps in communication and you're definitely doing that. Um, you know, not to mention the rate of response that you and your team had during the pandemic after the governors closed the school. Um, the way that you've continuously communicated with parents on what's happening at the school level through all of this. Um, you know, I could go, go on and on, but it has been a pleasure and I enjoy working with you and I'm excited to see what the next year brings. Thank you for all of your hard work. Thank you, Sheila. Mr. Chair. Mrs. Naparata. Um, really, I, I think Mrs. Blythe stated it so well, um, at Dr. Gogan, you're, you're just so, so driven and it's exactly what was needed 
in this district. And I think the, the improvements are there and there's more to come. Um, and to, to reiterate what Mrs. Blythe had said in terms of the shutdown and the pandemic, I mean, the, your work with your staff and their immediate implementation of learning so that there was, was no lag time, no gaps. Um, everybody was able to get up and running and in, really into a, a routine um, from the start. Um, I, I definitely hope that waiver goes through for, for everybody's sake because of how hard they're working. Um, but I think it just in general, the, the academic rigor that's happened, that's been happening, um, obviously even before the shutdown is, is just so great. And our students are going to be better off um, because, of, because of the work that you and, and your staff are doing. And, um, you know, just your, your drive to and your passion to make this district all it can be um, because that's, that's important um, for, for all of us and to all of us. So thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Thank you. Dr. Grogan, um, it continues to be a real pleasure to, to work with you and to just see where you're bringing us. I know that um, just to echo the points that Kathy and Sheila made, it's the passion, the drive, and another word I would add to that would be structure. There have been a number of structures that you've put into place over the course of the last several years. And ag I agree, it really positioned us well to, to be responsive to this current situation. But even outside of this current situation, that was, it's been this, um, this buildup, whether it be the curriculum or some of the things that are happening on the um, district leadership team that have prepared us for this and it's positioning us well moving into the future. So, you know, the relationships, all of that, I think has just, it's all just one package that has been sort of evolving over the last couple of years. I'm really excited to see where we're headed in the next couple of years. So thank you for all your continual effort. Thank you, Kelly. And the Webster pride, you came in with pride about yeah. this town. And I think that that's something that, you know, we all, whether we live here or, or we work here, right, um, and admire. So thank you for that too. Thank you. If I may just say that, um, first of all, it's an honor to be the superintendent in Webster. And I definitely love my job and I love Webster. And um, I wanna just thank you for recognizing me tonight and all of the work that we're doing. Um, I, I will say that um, my job as the leader of the suit, you know, as a superintendent is to bring people together and build teams and uh, build collaborative teams. And we've done that. And you're seeing the uh, fruits of teamwork, respect, and um, many people participating. Uh, this is not a one person, uh, job, I may be the leader and oftentimes I'll say I'm like a gardener planting seeds and sometimes I'm like a cattler cattling people but keeping us all together moving ahead. Um, I, I, there is something very very special about Webster and I'm very drawn to it and even though I've been uh, home working um, the one thing that my family um, has been able to see because they don't see much of me when I'm actually in Webster is um, how much I care about Webster <laughs> and uh, they're amazed um, and they can see that I love it and I do love it here. So um, I'm glad that you are recognizing the changes. Um, I, I think that we've worked as a solid team. It's not one person um, and we've made significant improvements and um, we will continue to do so. Um, and there are amazing things and amazing people doing hard work every single moment in, in Webster. And that's, you know, from, cafeteria workers to custodians to paraprofessionals to teachers and staff and administrators it's you know we're trying to pull everybody together as one united team and we are you know and tonight was great to hear from you know logan you know we're, mm -hmm. we're doing it for kids right the work we're doing is for kids it's directly related to making opportunities happen for our students um, and breaking down barriers and that's what drives me every day. So um, thank you for saying the nice things tonight to me. Mr. Chairman? Just, just one additional thought. I mean, I was on the committee, uh, Dr. Gogan, back 
couple of years ago when, when we were interviewing you and others, and we made the decision to offer you the position. And, and I think at that time, just to echo what you said, you saw something in Webster and we saw something in you. And, and I couldn't be more pleased that, that at that time we made the decision to, to make you the offer. And I think in, in, in simple terms, you haven't proven us wrong. We made the right decision. And particularly everyone else echoed w what you've done during this uh, situation with the pandemic, which is, which was, you know, something that we had to react to in real time. But what I've seen in, in comparing to other districts is that we were more prepared than a lot of districts because of what we had done prior to that. Mm -hmm. And again, it comes to leadership. It takes a team, but it, get, it begins with the leader. So again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Yep. So it's funny, Mr. McCarry, you mentioned that because when I was completing Dr. Gogan's evaluation, I was thinking about the lunch that we had with Dr. Gogan at Point Breeze. <laughs> at Point Breeze, yeah. And that's, I, I try as hard as I can, depending on my professional schedule to attend those because the interview is fine, but it's very robotic just because of the nature yeah. of the process. Yeah, the lunch is, the lunch is. That's yeah. really where you get to know the person. Yes. And I won't say what Mr. McCarry and I talked about walking out to the car, <laughs> but whenever you hire anybody, um, obviously you try to do your best, you interview, you think about it, some of us pray about it, and then you hope you make the right des decision. And certainly based on your performance in the district, um, I certainly feel very, very confident that those of us that were on the committee at that time made the absolute best decision in having you lead this school district. I want to thank you for your efforts to reiterate, uh, reiterate my colleagues during this extremely difficult and trying times. Um, not only the operational aspects that have had to be implemented, but every time you and I have spoken, I don't know if you're just a great poker player, but your positivity and your enthusiasm, as I'm sure things were extremely difficult for you like everybody else that we are struggling with in these times. So I know how much you care about the kids and I am very excited, although my tenure on the committee most likely will end very, very soon. I feel very confident that you will be here leading the district for many years to come. So thank you. Thank you, David. It's a team effort. It is. It's a team effort. And uh, we really have a lot to be proud of in Webster. And we did hit the ground running with the shift to remote learning and the school closure and all of the work that we, you included as a school committee, that you approved and supported all along the way with um, developing our curriculum, reversing our budget so that the money went into the classrooms and into what the teachers need. All of what we've done over the last three years had us teed up. You know, we've, we're using everything that we have done now and we developed a level of consistent understanding over the last three years, um, equitable access to programs, um, and we have room to grow, but we're, there's great things that happen here, and they will continue to. Thank you so much for your kind words tonight. And I just want to thank my colleagues for uh, actually completing the evaluations on time because it didn't make things much easier. And I know we're all very busy and, and it's very important for us to do this. Um, so thank you very much. I would just end with uh, one housekeeping and I would just ask, entertain a motion to approve the superintendent's evaluation as presented. So moved. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laura, would you pull the committee, please? Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Blythe? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes. Next item on the agenda under new business is the approval of the Park Avenue Elementary Student Handbook. Good evening, Mrs. Parmley, I assume. Yep, that's me. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How is, how is everybody? <laughs> You're doing okay, thank you. Great. This is a very different way to see you all, um, but it's good to see you one way or the other. So for the Park Avenue handbook, um, we were asked just to highlight, because I know you have the list in front of you, some of the most important pieces. So 
going right to page nine, one of the pieces that we changed is under arrival. We added that drop-offs in the parking lot on the first floor are not permitted. We wanted to make sure for children's safety that this happened um, at the back where our Ray Street entrance is, but also that we were asking our afternoon walkers that they also had to be picked up at that point at the Ray Street entrance. And we wanted our walkers to be last. We felt this was a safety measure in order to make sure that students and families were not walking in between cars as, as they're coming and going. Mm -hmm. And let's see, going down through here, on page 31, we did just add in the piece about that we would be using the ALICE protocols during our lockdown drills. We did not add a lot of information with that, but we did want to let families know that that is what we're doing as opposed to the traditional lockdown. And then on page 34 under transportation, we added that an adult must receive their child at the door of the bus. Older siblings are not allowed to walk younger siblings home from the bus during their time at Park Avenue. And we felt like that was important to put in there because we didn't wanna see you know, our, four, our fourth graders or our third graders being responsible for walking home um, a second grader. And we also included that we would prefer or that a bus driver may not grant permission because what we found is um, we did have a few of our bus drivers that said, well, as long as you give me a note, we'll allow that to happen. So we just wanted to kind of make that very clear for safety purposes that we did not want that to happen at our level. And then on page 37, um, we have the bullying prevention procedures that was updated. And that was part of some of the changes. I know that there was an entire committee for the district that um, had a big piece of that. And that was also referred to on page 14. And it, what it did is it summarized all of the Webster bullying prevention procedures. So that was added in as well. And I know Dr. Mackay was a big part of that committee and she would also be available to answer questions. But other than that, our changes were very minor. They had to do with staff dates and names. Are there any questions? I just have one question, Mrs. Parmley. Yes, On that sir. page 34 regarding the language for older siblings. Yes. The intent of that language, as you indicated, older siblings from Park Avenue, or is the intent any older? Because I first read it as if I had a freshman or sophomore in high school, you would not allow that sibling to get the kids. So the piece as far as at the door of the bus, so I should clarify that because we have two different situations that sometimes that we, that we come up against. So you are correct. I probably should, I should probably crystallize that. We need adults to receive the children at the bus. We want to see a grown up's face at the bus as they receive the child. What we do not want is to have an older sibling come and say, come with me. So you would not want a sophomore junior sibling, because as a parent, I'm just think, you know, trying to think forward, you're gonna have a lot of families who rely upon the older, you know, reasonable older, say, I don't know if you can call any teenagers reasonable, and I've had a lot of them, but <laughs> reasonable older siblings, you know, that, that would be safe to get their younger siblings off the bus. They could potentially be babysitters too, 16-year-old um, babysitters picking up kids for parents. So we may want to fix that. Okay, yeah, we may want to make it a little bit more specific. Yeah. Maybe I with, think, you know, parent permission slips um, that parents are signing off that so-and-so is picking up this person. That's right, and I think we just would like to see that come through the school as opposed to through the bus driver so that we're aware. Um, we just don't want any safety issues to where we don't know where children are or who are picking them up. So thank you very much. That's, that's something we will absolutely um, look at again and rephrase. Dr. McKay. The other part of that was that there are students who are riding the bus as fourth graders that parents in the past have said, oh, they can just walk, they can walk home or they can take the kindergartner home with them. And so it, it really, um, when I read this, I, I read more specifically about that as well, um, that we really don't want fourth graders walking home um, on their own. 
and especially walking younger siblings home to be the ones responsible for uh, for departure from the bus. We have had some situations where there have been some mishaps and um, and we certainly don't want to put that responsibility on a fourth grader. And I trust me, I understand that. I think that's great. I just, again, if I was a parent and I'm working, I might have my sophomore daughter, you know, wait at the bus for my third grade son and wouldn't have a problem with that. And I think that's a reasonable parental decision as long as, to your point, Mrs. Barnley, that the school's aware of it. We'll have so to we can update that. that. We can update that. You can update that. You bet. I absolutely will. Claire. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the committee? It otherwise looks great. Thank you. It was a team effort <laughs> between Dr. Mackay and Mrs. Zablocki and I. We put I we put eyes on this multiple times. <laughs> <laughs> and then your head starts to spin because you've been looking at it too often. You're and exactly right. A year from now, someone will find an error. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> 10 minutes from now, some <laughs> annoying school committee member who reads these things will find an error. <laughs> so with that being said, I will entertain a motion to approve the Park Avenue Elementary Student Handbook as presented with the transportation section on page 34 to be updated as discussed. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, will I pull the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes. Thank you very much for the Park Avenue team, for not just this, but everything you're doing. Uh, next item on the agenda is approval of Webster Middle School Student Handbook. Mr. Zajac. So I'm actually going to be um, presenting tonight. Okay, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Um, so while it looks like we have a lot of changes, most of the changes are in uh, reorganizing and rewording to make things um, smoother um, and more of a flow with connecting um, the topics uh, and clarity. Um, so the first thing that was added on page six uh, was a couple paragraphs um, about parent information, um, having parents make sure that they update the school when there's changes of address and phone numbers, um, uh, copying the elementary school. We also added a piece about um, student advisory council because that was not in there previously. Another one of the highlight changes would be on page 14. Um, this was already in there, but it hasn't been a practice, was, uh, is about um, no more paper report cards. I feel like we can move forward with this, being that we just uh, did this with um, the shutdown, being able to uh, accommodate this for quarter three grades. So, um, like I said, that's already in there, so it's not really a change. Uh, the other major changes were the addition of um, PBIS charts uh, to make, again, to be more in line with what's happening at school um, and the expectations. Uh, dress code on page 32 was also uh, um, clarified uh, with uh, expectations and um, expectations and possible consequences. And on page 37, there's some a lot of reorganizing and updating of the discipline. Again, it, it wasn't uh, as smooth as it could have looked, so now it's more of a, progress, a progressive um, approach. Uh, I also added on page 46 a section about searches and the law on that, and then page 82 additions on uh, infractions on use of technology. So those are the major things. Any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none. I will entertain a motion to approve the Webster Middle School Student Handbook as presented. So moved. 
There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? And again, I'll reiterate to you, Ms. Peterson and Mr. Zajac, that thank you very much for all your hard work. I know how hard you worked during the school year, but especially the last, uh, it's been almost two months now. Um, thank you for all your Only work. two months? <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> Hearing no further discussion, Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Member Siddiqui? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparata? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes, and I, Paul, Mrs. Siddiqui, you did vote yes, correct? Correct. I just want to clarify, so that was a unanimous vote because the audio on my end wasn't 100%, so that was a, un a unanimous approval. Next item on the agenda is the approval of Bartlett High School Student Handbook. Good evening, Mr. Thomas. Good evening, Mr. Hurton. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm okay. <laughs> so our, our handbook is quite lengthy, as you know. Um, so I thought I'd just kind of group some things together. There were a lot of changes. A lot of it was just cleaning stuff up, like the guidance section is updated to match the previously approved program of studies. Some of the disciplinary actions, the definitions were updated. Uh, group offenses were rearranged. We moved like bait to the smoking area updated the attendance and tardy policy, the MIA updated. I think the biggest thing from a, a disciplinary standpoint was removing the ADP and adding the in-school intervention uh, piece, and that would be uh, staffed by a, a para, and we have room for that. I think that's probably the biggest thing. Um, everything else is kind of more, I don't say completely cosmetic, but largely cosmetic, except for the attendance and tardy policy, which are influenced by the uh, in-school interventionists. We wanted to, having um, a much better handle on the data that we looked at, we didn't want to be counterproductive with anything that we we're doing in terms of attendance or the tardy policy because I think as um, I had mentioned before, the ADP was something which has occurred only on Thursday. So a, a child who committed an offense on a Monday would not get a consequence until Thursday in many cases whatever learning would occur from that was uh, too far removed from the, the actual offense. Um, the tardy thing was where we were getting kids um, actually ending up suspended because they were late, you know, five minutes per quarter. This will give us the time to um, actually have those students make up time in, in a more productive manner and not uh, escalate into a more serious consequence. So uh, those are like the general categories if you have a page by page thing i know uh miss kuzlin is here who along with mrs nieves kind of um spearheaded more of the specific changes page by page but i know she um also prepared a sheet for you with those changes page by page any questions or comments from the committee i i did have just one question um, on page 16, uh, when you're listing out the GPA mm -hmm. points, um, accelerated is crossed out. Is that going to be replaced with uh, pre-advanced placement? So there'll still be a 1.3 points. That is correct. If that's yes. if that if that didn't get crossed out, that's an error on my end. Again, um, trying to do this online virtually was a challenge, um, and um, utilizing some of the suggestions. So, accelerated was already a term that was changed in the program of studies. So that will get cleaned up as long. And I believe we missed removing of an ADP somewhere on page thirty three or thirty four as well. So, and yes, get, get your, the, the, the differentiation of the three standards for the GPA still exist. The terminology was updated in the recent program of studies. Yeah, the, okay. the weighting is, is still the same. It's just that okay. nomenclature. Okay, thank you. And Mr. Thomas, am I assuming correctly based on your comments that you are reinstituting in-house suspension? Is that no? It's not. Gonna, it's not going to be a intervention. It, okay. It's much more flexible than that. It's going to be an intervention. So if, if, say, a student like over the course of the week, 
missed like a half an hour total time for being tardy. They might go into that intervention room for lunch instead and make up that time. It could also be a student who was sent from class for whatever reason. Um, currently, we have a spot where, you know, they're hanging out by the office or someplace like that or in that fishbowl area. Mm -hmm. They would be able to go to that intervention area as well. So there's a lot of flexibility around that. It also may be a place where sometimes students come in and they're just like, you know what, Mr. Thomas, like I, I cannot do this with that teacher today, but can I stay in your office and do some work? And rather than have them do that, they can get work and go into that area. So there's a lot of flexibility with it. We don't really wanna use it as a completely punitive um, fashion. So would this require a new para position in order to staff this program? It's, a, it's a, more of a shifting. We had um, a number of paras in that Quest program okay. that, uh, <clears throat> that we would shift one over. I really like it, by the way. Um, just to play Debbie Downer for a moment, we're yeah. unsure what the budget is going to look like. Absolutely. As you know, and yep. you know, some of the, you know, there's best case, worst case. If it's worst case, it's really bad. Yeah. Would this program potentially have that position cut? And if it would, would you go back to ADP or is that something you would have to reevaluate? No, we'd have to reevaluate. We just don't, ADP just was not um, an effective deterrent. Okay. So I think that, I mean, we, when we can, well, the, between the administrators and guidance and stuff like that, we, we always have kids in our office doing stuff that, for whatever reason, can't engage in the coursework at that particular time. It would just be better to have like a more structured situation uh, with some work that are always there um, that they're already prepared for when those kids come in there. But I, I can't tell you the number of times that, you know, our, the students face a lot of difficulties um, from all different demographics, but sometimes they just come in and they're not ready to engage in that work. Um, and it's very helpful to have a different area for them to go to. And you know, all of us have those kids in our office, but sometimes current business, <laughs> you know, interrupts and it's not always good to have a, a student in your office <laughs> trying to do work when parents come in or whatever. So it's what we're trying to do. But if we, if we don't have that position, we'll, we'll find a, another way to attack it. Okay. Any other questions or uh, just sorry, one other housekeeping, and I know this is really hard to do remotely on Chromebooks. You may be, know this, but your your table of content pages don't align with the pages. Okay. Just so you know, I went to go look for a section, and I it was said like table of contents said page thirty one. It was actually on page thirty three. That's all. Yeah, we've gone back and forth between a Word file and a Google Doc. So Lisa has the final version that will then have that. Be make sure that that gets re-edited. Okay, that's what I assumed. Sometimes that's on purpose, Mr. Hurton, so that you don't ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good plan. Trust me, I can do it too. Uh, any other questions or comments from the committee? And again, let me once again thank you, Mr. Thomas, and, and your whole team uh, during this difficult time and the effort that you're putting in and trying to uh, educate and counsel and support staff and I know it's very challenging so thank you. Welcome. Hearing no further discussion, uh, geez I apologize, was there a motion made yet? No. All right, I will entertain a motion to approve the Bartlett High School Student Handbook. So moved. There's a motion and a second, any further discussion? Hearing none, Laura, would you pull the committee please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes. And again, that was a unanimous vote of approval by the committee. Next item on the agenda is acceptance of waiver application of DESI 185 day requirement. Dr. Gogan. Thank you. Um, as you know, this has been a trying time and Every minute we're getting different rules and regulations and having to be flexible. When the commissioner first came out with the 185 day requirement, 
he had given us information that made us believe that we only had to make up the three snow days and any dates before March 16th. He has and his team have kind of changed their mindset and put an 185 day requirement on every district. But he's also opened it up for districts who hit the ground running um, the week of March 16th to apply for a waiver for those days. And I would like to apply for that waiver. The waiver letter is in your packet that I have created. Um, uh, in attendance with this le letter, there will be ample evidence, probably about this thick, of all of the uh, sample lessons and work that has been was done over the course of the week between March 16th and 20th. It does require the school committee chair's signature. It doesn't necessarily require a vote, but in all transparency, I think it's wonderful if you do take a vote on it. Um, I will be hopefully mailing this off tomorrow. Um, our teachers, as you know, and our plan, we were able to send out enrichment activities on March 16th, and uh, the data is kind of remarkable. So I have my fingers crossed that this would uh, move our last day of school to June 15th. It's not final. Um, if, if it's not approved, our last day of school, I believe, is June 22nd. So um, I think everybody wants this approved. Any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to approve the waiver application of the 185 day requirement to, dis to DESE. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laura, will the committee please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member Nabrata? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes, and that is a unanimous vote as well. Next item under new business is approval of feasibility agreement. I assume Mrs. Perangeli or Dr. Gogan. No, that was a <laughs> <laughs> sliding it on over. Uh, <laughs> good job. Uh, so in your packet, you will have a copy of the feasibility study agreement that we received from the MSBA. Um, it's another step in our process uh, is moving the park, uh, the Bartlett project forward, not Park Ave. Geez, that's a change. Uh, the Bartlett project forward. Uh, the just so you know, the selectmen last night actually had this on their agenda also and voted to approve it. Um, I called Doug this morning to thank him, but it, it was the school committee um, who needed to approve the uh, feasibility study agreement as they will be the board um, responsible. Uh, and that's exactly the same process that we followed with the Park Ave project also. So you can never have too much approval though. So I thanked him and um, appreciated his support and his committee's support. Um, one thing I did want to point out with this agreement uh, to me is the most important page of the agreement, um, which is the back page, the last page of the document. It's um, Exhibit C. Um, this is you can see the reimbursement. Which, reimbursement. Yep. That Bartlett will Webster will receive from the Bartlett project at seventy six point eight four. Um, so. Uh, you know, to do any project around the state, uh, you know, on a state average, you're probably looking at a 50% reimbursement. Um, so Webster is getting 76.84. It's kind of a, a no brainer to me, um, looking at uh, what projects cost moving forward and, and what the town will be looking at. Hmm. So with approval of this, we have some more work to do. We have some copies to get. We are um, I've submitted some paperwork for to the legal department um, on the town side uh, to put the Webster School Committee as the governing body, and I'm looking forward to getting that. I'll send that along with this document in, and um, it's another step that we can check off the list. And just for those that might be watching this meeting, um, this is the feasibility study that was approved at town meeting. The process with the MSBA is once you get approved by their board, you have to actually sign a contract, for lack of a better term, between us as the town and the MSBA with the intent that the MSBA 
will reimburse roughly 76% of reimbursable expenses up to the maximum potential budget of a million dollars. Very good. Any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the feasibility agreement as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member Naparata? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes, and that is a unanimous vote as well. Next item on the agenda is bullying prevention and intervention policy, JICFB-R, first reading. Dr. Mm. Thank you. Um, we, uh, com we had a committee, uh, the Bullying and Prevention Intervention Committee. Um, I want to give a shout out to that committee, Mrs. Mackay, Gina Neves, Heidi Peterson, Kathy Barris, Nancy Guiney, Christian, and uh, Jill Chapdelaine and myself worked on this um, for months um, over the course of a couple years. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, and we finally have it updated and it has um, updated regulations. We weren't out of regulations with it, but we've changed the language so it's more understandable. Uh, we did post it on the website for public comment from February to March 2020. I want to give a special shout out. It was translated into Spanish and Portuguese and posted on our website. But I want to give a special shout out to Margarita Nieves, who, after it was translated by Google Translate, she translated it again so that it was uh, much more easily understood in Spanish. Um, this plan before you is very, very comprehensive. It takes a, an approach of addressing bullying and cyberbullying and strengthens our existing protections for our students. It includes um, ongoing assessment of our students' needs and resources. It includes conducting a DESE developed student mm -hmm. survey to, an to analyze student climate every four years. Um, it details our reporting and documenting. Uh, bullying forms have all been updated. It mandates annual training and ongoing professional development for staff. Um, and it details how uh, we're going to provide equitable access to our students through our counselors, curriculum, safety plans, and students with IEPs and 504s. And it, it's very, very thorough, thorough and uh, details prevention approaches. Um, Mrs. Mackay and um, Mrs. Peterson are here. Um, if you want to jump in and add to um, the work that we did, I'd be happy to pass it to you. Don't be shy, guys. <laughs> <laughs> trying to find the onion button. Um, I think that this was uh, a very necessary step. We needed to just update the language to be consistent with the model um, that the state put out. And I think that we worked really diligently to follow the model and include all of the pieces that, um, that the state sort of represented as what should be in the plans. Um, we, this gave us an opportunity to look at what each school has already for plans um, for programming for prevention and intervention. I know that um, I can speak for Park Ave. We have, you know, we do second step across uh, all grades. And in addition to that, we had purchased a few years back, we had purchased the specific bullying unit that is also put out by the same company, Committee for Children, that puts out second step. Um, and our counselors go in and do um, classroom groups specifically um, addressing bullying. And they teach things like how to recognize bullying, how to report bullying, and how to respond to bullying. Um, and then they, they end with utilizing your superpowers, which is um, thinking about you know, the good feelings that you have and not, not allowing others to take those away from you, but doing it in such a way that doesn't blame the victim, that doesn't blame the student for, um, for any maltreatment that might take place. And so it's really empowering to the students. It also gives us a, a very unified language that when we, when we talk about bullying, we're all talking in the same way and it's very consistent. And that's one of the things that, um, that we should do so that um, it's, it's addressed 
consistently across the school. And, and then um, I'll pass the torch on to Heidi. She's still on, Heidi. Right, yep. and across the school and across the district. So when we were working together, there were just some minor things that we weren't on the same page with. So it's important that all three buildings are um, following the same protocols. Um, I think one of the important things that we added to the documents was the word alleged. Um, just because someone reports bullying doesn't mean it is bullying. Um, there has to be an investigation and a process. So um, it puts a target on the bully when you call someone a bully and also victimizes. So by using the word alleged um, clears that up a little bit too. So some, some good things that came out of uh, all three buildings meeting together. I just want to be clear that any alleged bullying will be investigated. And so the forms are, um, are across the, the district consistent and anything alleged will have a paper trail on everything, mm -hmm. which is what we need to do. Thank you very much. Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, with the only comment being a cute bark. <laughs> that's my puppy <laughs> that's what I assume <laughs> yeah. just so folks know it's school committee policy that anytime there's a new policy present uh, proposed by the administration or a change to a policy it is our policy to go through three readings of that policy at three different meetings with the goal hopefully that the policy would be approved at the third meeting so without any further comments or questions this will be the first reading of the proposed bullying prevention and intervention policy. Thank you for all your efforts on that. Next item on the agenda is review transfer signing of warrants, bills, payroll, and vouchers. We do have uh, the first item under that is approval of end of year transfer. We do have a request from the Office of Business and Finance. Approval allowing the transfer of funds between multiple accounts. This will expedite the end of the year transfer procedures and enable the school department to effectively close out the FY20 school year budget. Uh, this is something that has been proposed and approved for as long as I've been on the committee and it makes it much more effective and easier for Mrs. Prangley and her team to uh, close out her end of the year budget. And I assume she's not waving to me, but that adorable little boy on the screen but Mrs. Prangley, is there anything you wanted to add? Uh, nope, nope, you covered it pretty well. Uh, Are you the, sure you don't want to add anything? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> Are there any questions or comments from the committee? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the end of year transfer uh, request as submitted. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes, and that is a unanimous vote approving that motion. And then just a final item, um, we were presented with the warrant for uh, May 14, 2020. Are there any questions or comments related to the warrant that was presented to us? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion to approve the warrant as presented. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. Chairman Hurton? Yes, and that is also a unanimous vote. And just before we adjourn, am I correct in assuming that we do not have a scheduled meeting on May 26th? That's You're correct. Right. Okay. Unless something of urgent nature comes up, which again, considering the budget and everything that is happening, it may. Our next scheduled meeting will be the second Tuesday in June, which will be June 9th 
most likely at 6.30. Again, I want to thank all the uh, administrators and the staff and faculty in our district for all that they are doing for our kids during this difficult time. And finally, I will entertain a motion to- Excuse report. me, um, Chairman Hurton? Yes. According to our school calendar, our next meeting is June 30th. Well, I don't think we're gonna be able to go between now and June 30th without a meeting. No, I would agree. I don't know how that happened with the calendar, but we can either, as a committee, we can do in the, in the admin team, we can decide to meet two weeks from now, or we can decide to meet on June 9th, or we can decide to meet when the need is there. So I believe at a minimum, we're going to need to meet at least by June 9th. I would, I would suggest that we um, do June 9th as opposed to the May 26th date. It will give us a little bit more time to figure out what's going on. And once again, as a reminder, as of right now, the elections are on June 15th. So um, again, that so why don't we plan and everybody schedule for June 9th? Okay. Um, if we could just post it, I think we try to post them in a calendar on the school district uh, website, I believe, right, Mrs. Prandley? Yes, I can take care of that. And again, there may be a need um, in this uncertain time to meet before then, and we will certainly discuss that and communicate that, but as of right now, the next meeting would most likely be on June 9th. Okay. Thanks for picking, uh, catching that, Ari. Appreciate that. Um, with that being said, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. There is a motion and a second. Laurie, would you pull the committee, please? Member Blythe? Yes. Member Naparada? Yes. Member, Na uh, Member Naparada, uh, who, Member Siddiqui? Yes. Member McCara? Yes. And Chairman Hurton. Yes, meeting adjourned again. Thank you very much, everybody. Yep. Thank, Thank you. you.